Howdy y'all! Welcome back for another story time. And this time I'll be presenting part two of The Gallant Taylor. The Gallant Taylor was collected and presented by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm and is read to you tonight by yours truly, Neil Milam. This story, along with all the stories on my story time playlist, are not intended for children. So, part two of The Gallant Tailor, where we left off, he was just received into the king's service with a separate dwelling set apart just for him. But the rest of the soldiers were very much set against the little tailor, and they wished him a thousand miles away. What shall be done about it, they said among themselves. If we pick a quarrel and fight with him, then seven of us will fall at each blow. That will be no good to us. So they came to a resolution, and they went all together to the king to ask for their discharge. We never intended, said they, to serve with a man who kills seven at one blow. The king felt sorry to lose all his faithful servants because of one man, and he wished that he had never seen him, and he would willingly get rid of him if he might. But he did not dare to dismiss the little tailor for fear that he should kill all the king's people and place himself upon the throne. He thought a long while about it, and at last made up his mind what to do. He sent for the little tailor and told him that he was so great a warrior that he had a proposal to make to him. He told him that in a wood in his dominions dwelt two giants who did great damage by robbery, murder, and fire, and that no man durst go near them for fear of his life. But if the little tailor should overcome and slay both of these giants, the king would give him his only daughter in marriage and half of his kingdom as a dowry and that a hundred horsemen should go with him to give him assistance. That would be something for a man like me, thought the little tailor. A beautiful princess and half a kingdom are not to be had every day. And he said to the king, Oh yes, I can soon overcome the giants and yet have no need of the hundred horsemen. He who can kill seven at one blow has no need to be afraid of two. So the little tailor set out, and the hundred horsemen followed him. When he had come to the border of the wood, he said to his escort, Stay here while I go and attack the giants. Then he sprang into the wood, and he looked about him right and left. After a while, he caught sight of the two giants. They were lying down under a tree, asleep, and snoring so that all the branches shook. The little tailor, all alive, filled both his pockets with stones and climbed up into the tree to make his way to an overhanging bough so that he could seat himself just above the sleepers. And from there he let one stone after another fall onto the chest of one of the giants. For a long time the giant was quite unaware of this, but at last he waked up and he pushed his comrade and said, What are you hitting me for? You are dreaming, said the other. I am not touching you. And they composed themselves again to sleep, and the tailor let fall a stone onto the other giant. What can that be? cried he. What are you casting at me? I am casting nothing at you, answered the first, grumbling. They disputed about it for a while, but as they were tired, they gave it up at last, and their eyes closed once more. Then the little tailor began his game anew. He picked out a heavier stone, and he threw it down with force upon the first giant's chest. This is too much, cried he, and he sprang up like a madman, and he struck his companion such a blow that the tree shook above them. The other paid him back with ready coin, and they fought with such fury that they tore up the trees by their roots to use as weapons against each other, so that at last, they both of them lay dead upon the ground, and now the little tailor got down. Another piece of luck, said he, that the tree I was sitting in did not get torn up too, or else I should have to jump like a squirrel from one tree to another. Then he drew his sword, and he gave each of the giants a few hacks in the breast, and he went back to the horseman and he said, The deed is done. 
I have made an end of both of them. But it went hard with me, and in the struggle they rooted up trees to defend themselves. But it was no use. They had to do with a man who can kill seven at one blow. Then you are not wounded? asked the horseman. Nothing of the sort, answered the tailor. I have not turned a hair. The horseman still would not believe it, and rode into the wood to see. And there they found the giants wallowing in their blood, and all about them lying the uprooted trees. The little tailor then claimed the promised boon, but the king resented him, and he repented his offer, and he sought again how to rid himself of the hero. Before you can possess my daughter and half of my kingdom, said he to the tailor, you must perform another heroic act. In the wood lives a unicorn who does great damage. You must secure him. A unicorn does not strike more terror into me than two giants. Seven at one blow, that is my way, was the tailor's answer. So taking a rope and an axe with him, he went out into the wood and he told those who were ordered to attend to him to wait outside. He had not far to seek. The unicorn soon came out and sprang at him as if he would make an end of him without delay. Softly, softly, said he, most haste, worst speed, and remained standing until the animal came quite near. Then he slipped quietly behind a tree. The unicorn ran with all its might against the tree and stuck his horn so deep into the trunk that he could not get it out again, and so was taken. Now I have you, said the tailor, coming up from behind the tree and putting the rope around the unicorn's neck. He took the axe, set free the horn, and when all his party were assembled, he led forth the animal and brought it to the king. The king did not yet wish to give him the promised reward, and set him a third task to do. Before the wedding could take place, the tailor was to secure a wild boar which had done a great deal of damage in the wood. The huntsmen were to accompany him. All right, said the tailor, this is child's play. But he did not take the huntsmen into the wood, and they were all the better pleased for the wild boar had many a time before received them in such a way that they had no fancy to disturb him again. When the boar caught sight of the tailor, he ran at him with a foaming mouth and gleaming tusks to bear him to the ground. But the nimble hero rushed into a chapel which chanced to be near and jumped quickly out of the window on the other side. The boar ran after him when he got inside the door and shut it after him and he was imprisoned, for the creature was too big and unwieldy to jump out of the window too. Then the little tailor called the huntsmen that they might see the prisoner with their own eyes, and then he betook himself to the king, who now, whether he liked it or not, was obliged to fulfill his promise. And he gave him his daughter and half of his kingdom. But if he had known that the great warrior was only a little tailor, he would have taken it still more to heart. So the wedding was celebrated with great splendor and little joy, and the tailor was made into a king. One night the young queen heard her husband talking in his sleep, in his sleep and saying, Now boy, make me that waistcoat and patch me those breeches, or I will lay my yard measure about your shoulders. And so, as she perceived of what low birth her husband was, she went to her father the next morning and told him all, and begged him to set her free from a man who was nothing better than a tailor. The king bade her to be comforted, saying, Tonight, leave your bedroom door open. My guard shall stand outside, and when he is asleep, they shall come in and bind him and carry him off to a ship, and he shall be sent to the other side of the world. So the wife felt consoled, but the king's water bearer, who had been listening all the while, went to the little tailor and disclosed to him the whole plan. I shall put a stop to this, said he. At night he lay down as usual in bed, and when his wife thought that he was asleep, she got up, opened the door, and lay down again. 
the little tailor, who only made believe to be asleep, began to murmur, Now, boy, make me that waistcoat and patch me those breeches, or I will lay my yard measure about your shoulders. I have slain seven at one blow, killed two giants, caught a unicorn, and taken a wild boar. And shall I be afraid of those who are standing outside of my door? When they heard this <clears throat> from the tailor, a great fear seized them, and they fled away as if they had been wild hares, and none of them would venture to attack him. And so the little tailor, all his lifetime, remained the king. That is the end of the gallant tailor. Thank you for joining me and Marina. <laughs> and until next time, y'all be sweet.